I made this video almost three years ago titled Financial Decisions You Need To Make When You Turn 18. Look at his dumb little face. And people seem to love that video, but the problem was is that I wasn't even 18 myself at the point of making the video. I was making it in preparation for what I was gonna do when I turned 18 in hopes that the things that I was doing was gonna positively impact me. But fast forward three years, I now turn 20 as of, what day are we? about a week ago, and so I'm making an update to this video where I know everything that I'm saying is much more correct. And to speak about things that I'm much more confident to speak about because I know it actually made a positive impact. So whether you're 18, not 18 yet, or slightly older, you're gonna wanna watch this video because I'm gonna list off a bunch of things that you need to do when you turn 18 that you would have probably missed out on otherwise. So stay with me for the next 10 or so minutes and I promise you it will be well worth it. And just to preface, I'm not a financial advisor of any kind. This isn't even advice. I'm not even making this video right now and you're not even watching it. This is just me explaining what I did to put myself ahead of the rest. And so first things first is the one, the only credit cards. Now I'm gonna be careful what I show you here because it has all my details on it. Now similar to what I said in my last video, credit cards unfortunately have this common misconception around them that they will put you in uncontrollable debt and they are this evil in society. Whereas that couldn't be further away from the truth and therefore I'm gonna really quickly explain to you how to use them and to use them to your advantage. Credit cards are a tool, they're more of a rating system actually that the government used to deter how good and responsible you are with money. You see, this is a card, it has no value to it until I spend money on it. And then whatever money I spend on it, let's say for example, example, I spent £30 at Wish.com, I am now technically £30 in debt to this credit card company, so in this case, Tesco. <laughs> However, to get out of that debt, all I actually have to do is just transfer money back from my debit card over to my credit card, and then your debt is completely cleared. So if that's the case, what's the point of using a credit card anyway, because it just does sound like it's an extra step. The reason being is because for every time you spend money on a credit card, you go into temporary debt, and then when you pay back the money, the credit card companies see you as a trustworthy person. They are basically trying to judge how good you are with money. As if your parents let you borrow a bit of money and now they're trying to see, will he actually pay me back in time or the right amount of money? Therefore, they go, I lended this guy £30 to buy something at Wish.com and he paid me back three weeks later. Therefore, I trust him with the money that I'm letting him borrow and I'm going to give him more benefits on top of that. And the more you do this over and over again, it builds up your credit score, which is the rating system I was talking about to see how trustworthy you are with money. And now the higher your credit score is, the more money you can borrow. And this is a good thing because when you want to buy that nice house or that nice car for example as you're more trusted the banks will loan you more money whereas if you don't have a credit card there's no way to build up your credit score therefore banks have no reason to trust loaning you more money which means this is the only house you're going to be able to afford my condolences. And so when someone says credit card bad, credit card put you in debt, know that that's not true. You put yourself in debt, you just used a credit card to do that. I mean, if you stub your toe on the desk, it's not the desk's fault that you stub your toe, it's your fault that you stub your toe and the desk was just a thing that you used to stub it. You're the idiot here. And so as a rule of thumb, if you can't trust yourself with the most basic of things, don't get a credit card because you will not pay it back. And the first credit card that I got was this Tesco's one, right? Many credit card companies don't accept you as a young person because they don't trust you, but these credit builders are the ones you wanna find. And originally they only trusted me with like 200 pounds, which means I could only borrow 200 pounds at a time. But after borrowing money and paying it back over and over again, they slowly increased the limit at how much they trust with me. That makes sense. And now I have an American Express, which I've actually left in my car, unfortunately. But essentially it's just a massive upgrade to the Tesco's ones. They give you loads of points and benefits and this kind of thing. And you just kind of got to work your way up the credit card ladder. And so a good rule of thumb to stick by is to never spend more on your credit card than you have on your debit card, because you're gonna have to pay it back at the end of the month anyway. And so investing is the next one. Luckily for you now you've turned 18 you can actually take advantage of it and at its core there are four different types of investing and this is short term medium term long term and yourself and so i'll run through each option and tell you how you can take advantage of it short term is your things like your stocks and your cryptos this is essentially holding a stock or a crypto for between the time of like a couple weeks two months maybe even a year and don't get confused with swing trading or day trading because that isn't really investing at all it's more gambling this is like solid investing and similar with medium term investing it is stocks and cryptos but you just hold the stocks and cryptos for a longer duration of time this can be anywhere between i don't know a year to possibly five years maybe even 10 at a push and this is for like the singular stocks or cryptos or even property in this case that you feel like will do well over a reasonably short period of time and for both short term and medium term you can use brokerages such as trading 212 or for crypto you can use coinbase and i'll leave links down below in the description where you can get bonuses and stuff like that for signing up but it's very basic stuff and the actual first video i made in this channel was how to start investing as a teenager so go check that out it's literally the first video you'll find next is long-term investing now this is investing for basically retirement this is investing with the idea that you're not actually going to see the money for decades and decades and decades this type of investing i feel like everyone should be doing because it's not something that you have to constantly look at and focus on it's something that you are putting money in and forgetting about it 
for like 40 years. And if you want to do this type of investing, you have to use a tool known as an ISA, an ISA, or if you're from the US, you can use what's known as a Roth IRA. And these are essentially tax-free investment accounts that are almost like shielded by the government. So whatever you invest and make money on, you don't have to pay any tax at the end. Whereas with your normal investments and pretty much anything else, you pay tax on whatever money you make. Uncle Sam takes his cut. And finally, yourself. Now this is what I would suggest should be your main focus of investing. Because although investing in stocks and cryptos is important, sure, as a young person, investing in yourself should be your priority. The reason being is because if you don't invest in yourself, sure, you'll have like maybe 10, 20, 100 pounds to invest a month. But if you invest in yourself first and build up your income and your own value, then you can invest much more. I mean, forget what you've heard from other people investing like 50 to 100 pounds a month into the market isn't going to give you that good of a return. So focus on first increasing the amount you can invest by developing skills and generating income to then invest more. And the key to this is time, okay? Time is your friend of investing because time is what brings on compound interest. And I mean, to put this into perspective, if you had person A and person B and person A started investing at 100 pounds a month at 18 years old and person B started investing, let's say 500 pounds a month at 30 years old, person A is gonna end up with more money at retirement than person B, even though person B was investing more money because of the time that person they had in the market and compound interest is your friend because compound interest is a difference between investing 100 pounds a month for 50 years and pulling out 1.7 million or investing 100 pounds a month for 50 years and pulling out roughly 210,000. so please do me and yourself a favor and take advantage of it and this investing in yourself stuff moves me perfectly onto my next and final point but first coffee time And this leads me on to my next and final point. And this is less of like a financial decision you should be making and more of, I guess, a life one. And I got three things to go over here, okay? The first one is to do as much as you can. You are ridiculously young. And in the wise words of Gary V, you have so much time. I say wise words as if no one said it before, but you do. You have a ridiculous amount of time as a young person, more than you think. And if you're an ambitious young person, I understand the fear of time slipping away from ben beneath between your fingers because I feel it too myself. Since turning 20, I'm terrified to be honest because I have no idea what the future holds and I feel like I'm no longer a teenager. I've lost all my young years. However, looking at it from a perspective, I'm like, I'm 20. And these are the years where your education should thrive, right? There's a common misconception that education finishes after you finish like school or uni. Whereas this is the point where you get to educate yourself. It's not you have to be educated, you get to educate yourself on what you want to learn more about. Which is exciting, it's fantastic because you can pick the topics that mean the most to you and educate yourself on that. For myself, I had no idea what I wanted to learn, but I did know that I wanted my future life to be full of money, basically. I wanted to have all the nice things and therefore I thought, I'll educate myself on finance and, and mindset and entrepreneurship and I'll go from there. And that making the start to educate myself is what got me to where I am now, three years later, moving out of my home, halfway across the country, into a new apartment, buying my dream car and all these other nice glorious things. And it all started from educating myself, just actually choosing to learn something that I was interested in. So treat it as you get to educate yourself now instead of I have to educate myself because that's the mindset switch that can change anything. The second thing is to learn high value or high income skills. And what I mean by this is that you are valued on your time, especially as a young person. And a way to increase the value of your time is to basically make the things that you know more valuable. There's a reason that when people come out of university or out of education, the money that they make is minimal because they have the minimal amount of skills that they've learned. And although you may think, no, this person paid 9,000 pounds for a university degree, yes, but so did 10, 20, 30,000 other people. Therefore, their skills aren't as unique as you think. And the more unique the skills and the more in demand the skills that you have, the more money you'll make. So think about learning high value skills. And this could be anything. Online is very good at the moment because obviously it's constantly changing and adapting. But look into high value, high income skills and pick one and just go all in on it, all focused on it. The third thing is to give your time purpose. A lot of people just don't do this at all. They just don't give their time meaning and purpose. They spend their time partying and wasting it and this kind of thing. And I'm not the boring person that's like, you've got to work 24 seven. But what I am saying is to respect your time and it will respect you back because although you're scrolling on your phone and you're thinking it's okay I can waste an hour here because I'm going to get the hour back tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day there'll come a time where you don't get that hour back and there'll come a time where all you wish you had was more time therefore respect it don't waste it it's literally the most valuable thing because it's finite it's depleting in every single one of our lives and the people that respect it are the people that do something with their life do something great and the fourth and last thing is to have your future self in mind when you're making decisions a lot of people live in the now and only in the now where they neglect 
reflect what's going to happen to them in the future, right? They make awful decisions, they go out clubbing, they, they ruin their current moment. Whereas making every decision with the mindset of how is this going to impact my future self is going to make your future life much easier. And a lot of us do this anyway, right? We go to the gym not to make ourselves change straight away, but to impact our future lives. So why don't we do this in every area of our lives? You know, think, if I eat this shit food now, am I going to feel horrible about it later on? And am I going to hate myself? Am I going to lose all my self-esteem? Because it's going to be your future self that either has to pick up after your shit that you left behind you, or the one that gets to reap the rewards of your success. So have them in mind when you're making decisions. And that is it, ladies and gents. If you enjoyed, let me know. Leave a comment down below and hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. And if you want to learn more about high income, high value skills, then consider watching this video that I'll check on screen right now. It's essentially me teaching you the business model that's going to take over in this year and the coming years. Don't miss out on it. Ciao.